the Gen Z are, you know, competing for academic excellence, for better salary, for a better career. And at times, I feel like it's one of the main reasons, like, why I'm frustrated at times. So how to balance? See, when you are a perfectionist, you are bound to be in frustration. You want everything to be perfect, right? I would tell you, just leave a little room for imperfection also. See, in your home, in a corner you keep a dustbin, don't you? Any tissues or any garbage, what do you do? You go and put it in the dustbin. Suppose there is no dustbin at all in your room and in your home, where all the garbage will be? Everywhere. So, like you create a space for a garbage can or a dustbin, in your mind you create a space for some imperfection. It is okay to be a little bit imperfect and it, everybody cannot be perfect right now. We need to accept people as they are. So when we are broad-minded and broad-hearted, we can take everyone along with us and move forward. Namaskar Guruji. Animals who sometimes uh, do harm to us, like mosquitoes or um, flies or something like that. What can be our best approach to them, uh, to be uh, non-violent to them? You mean to say if a mosquito comes, can I kill the mosquito? Is that the question? <laughs> yes, you can. Hinsa is that you do with rage. You know, when you get angry and you have rage, you want to strangle somebody. That is Hinsa. It is in the consciousness, in the mind. It's in your attitude. Right? When you are walking, many ants die, some other creatures die. Even when you are breathing and breathe out, so many microbes are dying. So in your stomach, there are 50,000 type of bacteria. And whenever you eat some very hot food, many of them die. This is not Hinsa. Hinsa is that act that you do with rage and with anger. Yeah? And without your knowledge, you hit somebody. Suppose you are walking and you just sway your hand and it hits somebody. Do you call that Hinsa? No, that's not violent. But if you intentfully, wantingly do some harm to somebody, that is Hinsa. When it comes to relationships, when I give to the other person, I also start expecting the same. So how do you reduce that expectation and stop that suffering? It is always like that. When you are emotional, you just want to give everything. At the time, your brain doesn't work. Because you are swept by the emotions. But with so many times having that experience, you become little more cautious about it. And then you, you become aware, you see whether the other person is responding or not. Second thing is, don't express yourself too much. Be a little bit mysterious. When you want, just go and open up yourself totally and express all the time, all the feelings. See, nobody bothers about your feelings. How do you feel? How do you don't feel? What do you like? What do you don't? This is normal. We all do this, huh? isn't it? All of you, what do you do? When you meet with somebody, you go on telling them what do you like, what do you don't like. That person is not even interested in listening to you. <laughs> they feel so bored. And if you go on like that for every day, me, 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 I know this, I like this, I don't like this. Are, who asked you, my dear? <laughs> what do you like, what do you don't like? Keep quiet. Smile more, talk less. You know, in the beginning days of Art of Living, there were many international guests who used to come and do seva here. They all wanted to come to India and do seva. I'm talking about in early 90s, a girl who had come from Italy and a boy had come from Germany. They both didn't know each other's language. The Italian girl didn't know, those days it was not Euro, it was Lira in Italy and Dutch Mark in, in Germany. So the communication was not that uh, like what it is today. So they were all doing seva. But they both fell, and both of them had broken relationship. The lady had suffered a couple of 
relationship and broken broken heart she came and he also they were very they became very happy here doing seva and doing meditation all that they were doing gardening and many of those trees were all planted by many such devotees and then they somehow fell in love with each other working in the garden <laughs> it was like a hindi movie when the trees grow when the blossoms happen they both got said why don't we also blossom so they kept smiling at each other and then they finally came to me both of them we would like to marry i said yes you can do i you have my blessings but one condition don't learn each other's language <laughs> I said now you are doing everything by sign language and guessing keep it at that <laughs> I tell you their marriage lasted very long time but still they are couple now <laughs> there is a, a old sanskrit proverb it says vacharamba vikaro namade that means you start speaking you are distorting your feelings because you can never express your feelings 100% and when you cannot express you expect others to express their feelings they too cannot take it for granted they love you never question others love for you number one and never ask proof of their love to you suppose someone asks you prove me whether you really love me it becomes such a big burden and the person comes with a rose and there is something wrong with it today why you have come with ross so anything they do you will find something wrong in them in relationships you must not question someone's love for you whether they really love you or not take it for granted they love you and even if they don't love you so what you love everybody because you can't but love you are love this is the ultimate realization knowing we are made up of a stuff called love then nothing whatsoever can take away your smile your peace your joy and your wisdom we are constantly planning about our future so in this state of mind how can we find freedom and how can we find peace in our life yeah you have a very valid question i think every youth is facing this question right anxiety what will happen to me tomorrow what will be my career will i get a right right partner and will i get a proper job will i move forward will i be successful in my career these are the questions that haunt you it is quite natural instead of sitting and worrying about it i would say let go of the anxiety about it when you increase your self confidence look back in the past you have done very well so you there is no doubt that you will do it in the future also so increasing your self confidence number one second is invoking your intuitive ability you all have something called a gut feeling intuition if intuition comes up then you can see that you will know oh, what's going to happen tomorrow happy people can't create new thing only frustrated people who has question who has unhappiness who has disturbance inside they create beautiful creation like mona lisa like taj mahal my question is that is it really important to be happy in life no why would they create something for what to be more miserable no animal or even human beings ever want to be miserable ever want to be unhappy it is not the nature of life itself the nature of life is wanting to be happy wanting to be free suppose if someone ties you to a pole and frustrates you how would you like would you like to be that way no your natural tendency is to come out and be free freedom is happiness and nobody wants to be bound and if you are bound you can't do anything creative yes sometime necessity has become the mother of invention but it has happened rarely if you think frustration is the mother of invention you should have seen afghanistan should have been the most creative part in the world 
because 40 years, maybe two generations, they have seen only war. People are so frustrated. Any technology has taken birth there? Did they learn rocket science? Have they produced something beautiful arts? Nothing. See Lebanon, for example. How people are suffering there. When people are suffering, you can't put your attention to creativity. Your mind cannot go into technology. All that you want is how I can bring my food today. How I can get a piece of bread. How I can get a piece of, you know, fruit today. That is where your attention is. So I would say, occasionally if there is a stress, it makes people to work faster and harder. But if it becomes a routine, it kills all creativity, all good things in it. So, happiness is a natural need of every individual, anywhere in the world. Not just human beings, even animals. You know, if animals are happy, they do better performance. In our scripture, this material world has been uh, defined as Dukkhalayam Ashashyatyam. So, in this Dukkhalay or Ashashyatyam, how can we define happiness and satisfaction? It is not said only Dukkhalayam Ashashyatyam, it is also said Anandamaya. It's also said, it's all blissful. This is the instruction a teacher gives to a person at different times. You know? When someone is miserable, thinking about, oh, this happened, my life, you know, my grandfather died or my father died, somebody died. At that time, you can't tell them, oh, it's all blissful. At that time, you say, yeah, there is misery comes in life. And this is temporary. This misery doesn't stay forever. See, has any misery stayed forever? No. So, no misery will stay forever. Ashashvatam, Dukkhale, means misery is there, recognize it. This is what Lord Buddha said, life there is misery. You know, when Lord Buddha walked on this continent, he was a king. At the time, the India was flourishing so much. Everybody was so wealthy. All his disciples were very wealthy. Unlike Jesus, all the disciples of Jesus were very poor, fishermen. But here, they were all very rich people, businessmen. At the time, he told him, look, you have all the money, but you are still unhappy. You know, there is something you have to find within yourself. So he said, this is only temporary. Today someone gives you a praise, and that's gone. Isn't it? Tomorrow, day after, everybody is on their own, right? So things change, everything is changing, everything is temporary. And this is what you said, Dukkhale Vashashu. But this is all out of bliss also. The next lesson is, come on, look within you. See how lovely people are around you. They all love you and you love them all. Don't you? And so, this is all blissful. It's all full of prema The world is full of love. You only have to recognize that. Sometimes I feel bad vibes from other people. Is that logical or is it right to avoid that bad vibes or bad? Never mind. The world is full of vibration and don't think somebody will always give you bad vibes. Not no, necessary. It's not, it's not that, but it sometimes happens. Happens, because, yeah. Uh, B breathing techniques will help you to shield yourself from the bad vibes. Thank you. Sometimes when you feel so vulnerable, Meditation will definitely help you. What is the definition of happiness and peace and which is the most important in human life? You are asking what is Art of Living program is all about. It's all happiness program. The whole course is about happiness. What is happiness? How you can have it? What are the ingredients you should know? That is what we have made a workshop which is about 12 hours or 15 hours which anyone can learn. When they learn, they know how to get rid of stress how to be in the present moment, how to be happy. All these tips are given, not just lecture. You are given techniques using which you can find yourself in a better place. When there is no peace, there can't be happiness. 
Peace is the first step. Happiness comes after that, isn't it? For to be peaceful or happy, you need several things. What is that first? A violence-free and stress-free society. A body free from disease. If your body is, if you are sick, you cannot say I am peaceful, nor you can say I am happy. So, violence-free society, disease-free body, and then quiver-free breath. This you may not have noticed. If you just observe your breath, your breath is shaky or hot or uncomfortable. But if you do some breathing exercise, you can get over that tendency, the quiver in the breath, quiver-free breath, confusion-free mind. Suppose you have everything and you are confused. You want to get married, you have a good wealth, but you have two people to choose and you are so confused. Morning you like somebody, evening you like someone else. So once you choose someone and you talk to them, I say yes to them, then next day morning you say, no, no, I did a mistake, you talk to the other person. This sort of confusion make you sleepless, correct? Confusion-free mind, inhibition-free intellect. We are loaded with inhibition. Inhibition about race, religion, gender, age group, this inhibition we should get out of. If there is inhibition, there can't be peace, isn't it? If someone says, hey, you are a Muslim or you are Hindu, you are Christian, or if you see beyond that you are a human being first, and then you could be anything. <laughs> and if you are a Muslim, then it comes, are you Shia, are you Sunni? If you are a Hindu, it says, are you Vaishnava, are you Shaivite, or what are you? So we go into all this smaller identity and we get caught up. Similarly, oh, that's a girl, uh, this lady cannot do much, uh, only man can do, or man is hopeless. This type of prejudice against gender, religion, race, nationality, all this should be done away with. And then trauma-free memory. You have experienced some trauma and if it just stays in your mind, you always think about those bad things that has happened to you. You can't be peaceful, can't be happy. So, I would say this is the birthright and to gain these things, violence-free society, disease-free body, quiver-free breath, confusion-free mind, inhibition-free intellect, trauma-free memory, sorrow-free soul, you have to look into yourself and these are the techniques that you use, breathing technique, See, our breath connects us with our emotions. Using our breath, we can change our negative emotion, negative mind to positive. Yeah? Then you feel peaceful. Then you feel happy. Next step. Okay? I would like to request you to discuss the four Purusharthas and at this age, which Purusharthas should I focus on? Purushartha is that you can put your effort into, effort into building. If you are a student, you should put your uh, effort in studying. And if you have completed your studies, then you must put your effort in earning money, finding a career, building that up. Yeah? So, and then move, you know, you move on, whatever other your desires are there, fulfill those desires. Finally, you want to be free from everything and free the inner freedom. You should have that also. Every religion is based on love. So in your own opinion, what is love? Prem kya hai? The whole life if you speak on love, still it is not enough. But you know what it is. That is your first experience in your life. When a child is born, first it experiences pain. So it cries. The second experience is of love. The love is something that holds the whole planet together. Love is that which unites people, which is the very nature of your consciousness, your, yourself. 